I really do remember that maybe you are too young, but sometimes the situation was not so different even in Europe, maybe for different reasons. Um, I start from my Italian experience, of course, uh, and I do remember that in Italy we had a very heavy censorship for different reasons, normally sex, but maybe not only sex. And there were a certain number of good actors and good uh, showmen banned from the Italian television, for instance, because of some critics, some statements, some jokes dealing with the Italian politics in the past. Uh, and I remember that my very good friend, Gianluca Farinelli, who is the curator of uh, Bologna Film Archive, one of the best film archives in the world, it, for sure in Italy, um, presented a special program and a special project devoted to censorship in Italy. Uh, can you tell us something about this? Uh, and <laughs> if I can ask, was it the real reason why you were involved in the Jafar Panahi project after this? You can speak in Italian, you can be translated, or you can speak in English as you prefer. My English is so poor. It's fantastic. Ogni cineteca adora la, la censura. La ragione per cui abbiamo partecipato al, al, a questo progetto è perché in realtà noi gente di Cineteca adoriamo la censura, noi anzi finanzieremmo i censori perché grazie ai censori c'è una, una traccia formidabile della storia del cinema. No, questa è evidentemente una battuta. So every single film archive loves censorship and actually, and this is one of the reasons why we've participated in the project. Um, actually, we would even uh, finance censors if we could, because that leaves a lot of traces for us in film history. Of course, this is just a joke. So because cinema is a very fragile and volatile form of art, censorship really works very well because it works through bureaucracy. It leaves a lot of traces, very accurate traces. So for example, if you want to know exactly how long the first cut of a certain movie by Hitchcock was, uh, how long a Russian movie from 1930 or an Italian movie from 1921 was, we just need to look at what censorship said on that specific year. And usually censorship worked through very complex mechanisms and departments and the censorship mechanism began before the film was even shot. So for example, during the fascist or post-fascist era in Italy, uh, a producer uh, had to start talking to the people, to censors, before shooting the film, as soon as he had the idea. So that's when he first had to send, for example, the script, and then they would tell him, uh, you have to cut this, you have to modify this other part, this part is okay. So today we have an amazing amount of traces that tell us how these creative people uh, dealt with censorship and tried to avoid it. Sometimes the effect is tragic, it's ex really, really tragic but comic at the same time. For example, I remember a um, movie by Michele Rom, it was called Lenin in October. It was produced in 1938, 20 years after the October Revolution in the USSR. And it was about the feeling, how the revolutionary feeling was born. And in the first cut, when he first presented it, Stalin didn't really like it because there wasn't enough coverage of himself. Uh, the, the movie talked too much about Lenin and not enough about Stalin himself. And so he had to change that balance and talk about Stalin more. But then when Stalin died, uh, because the film in the meantime had become a real classic in Russian cinema, um, they decided to reduce once again the uh, coverage of Stalin's figure and uh, to reinstate somehow uh, Lenin. So we, ha we actually have now three different cuts. The first one where uh, Lenin is the main character, let's say. Then the second one where, where Stalin has a more important role. And finally, when Lenin is reinstated in the film as the main character.
In Italy, there is a very renowned case of censorship, and it's last tango in Paris, but it only concerns a few seconds of the film, so it's a tiny censorship. But the actual film in Italy that has suffered more from censorship is Totò. It's called Totò and Carolina, and Totò is one of is basically the most popular comedian in Italy. The film was about a policeman who fell in love with a prostitute. So here we have two problems. The first one being that Toto is a comedian. He makes fun of the police. So that's not good. And the second problem is that a policeman fall, falls in love with a prostitute. It was 1954, so the age of Cold War. We had a, a government that was center right wing and the Prime Minister at the time was the former Minister of Internal Affairs and Toto, this comedian, had made fun of him a lot before that, so he wanted some kind of revenge. Uh, so the film was blocked for one, uh, one year and a half. It was, it was reduced from two hours to 15 minutes and when it was released it was not comprehensible at all and it was banned from being shown um, abroad because it would ruin, it would damage Italy's reputation abroad.